How movies are made has almost become as important as what they're made about. Not only do YouTubers and enthusiasts obsess over gear, but so do professional filmmakers, or at least their marketing does. Took all the color science from the higher end camera they had that they make feature films with, they put it in this kind of prosumer camera that you can buy in the shops. IMAX for me is a portal into a level of immersion that you can't get from other formats. I'm sure you've heard everyone say this. It's not about the camera, it's how you use it. But I'll argue that 2023 has changed all of that. The camera has become more than just a tool, it's become the marketing and its stamp in cinema history. It's hard to think of a behind the scenes still that focuses just on a microphone or the sewing machine that made the wardrobe. And I can't think of a film where they showed the hammer that built the sets. The spectacle of how a camera captures a scene intrigues the audience more than any other tool on a film set. And it's always been this way. And because of this, it feels like they've become just as important as an actor attached to the film. We sometimes go see films simply because of how they were captured and the new technology that was used. The story, setting, and other less technical innovations seem to become secondary. In 2023, we saw films push boundaries with camera technology, from size to resolution to post-production capabilities, each innovation taking the audience on a different ride narratively. From Apple filming entire event launches with an iPhone to James Cameron exploring underwater utopias we could only dream of with state-of-the-art tracking technology. But in this video, I want to dial in on two movies that I think changed the course of how we make movies moving forward. And they did this in opposite ways. Their philosophies contradicting each other, yet their outcomes somewhat similar. This video, we're looking at the future of filmmaking and looking at Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Gareth Edwards' The Creator. Both Oppenheimer and the creator made a splash with their cinematic spectacle, touring IMAX theaters across the world and being recognized by their unique filming methods for major blockbusters. One film with the most expensive camera on the market and the other one, one of the most affordable. Oppenheimer shot on IMAX and 70 millimeter Kodak and the creator mostly on the Sony FX3, a multi-million dollar setup versus a modified consumer one. Now, despite your opinions on both films, the two have been groundbreaking for how money is spent with productions. Oppenheimer, one of the highest budget biopics and dramas at $100 million, and I'll argue the creator is probably one of the lowest sci-fi epics we've seen in recent years with a budget of $80 million. And as an indie filmmaker, this is something that really excites me. In an interview, one of the DOPs of the creator, Greg Fraser, shares that the size of the camera broke down the budget significantly because the FX3 needed less. Now, not because it was a cheaper camera, but because the domino effect behind it made it a leaner, meaner tool for a very nimble set. We would always pick the lightest weight stuff possible. That was probably the biggest factor in deciding the camera. It definitely did have a little bit of grain to it, but that grain was visually very interesting. And you know, the idea of having a gimbal was like, oh my God, now we can have rock. Like it looks like a tripod when you're still, but I can, you can instantly find shots and then just stand still. Smaller camera meant smaller accessories, less operators, and overall a faster production. That paired with its 128,000 ISO and run and gun gimbal system made it the optimal camera to shoot cinematic documentary style or what I'd like to phrase hybrid shooting. Versus Oppenheimer, the camera was the production. IMAX meant a larger footprint, meaning they had less flexibility and more crew. Now that didn't stop the cinematographer Hoyt Van Hoytema lugging this like 100 million pound camera over his shoulder, but it's easy to say that the bigger camera made for the bigger production. Now you might think that Gareth Edwards' philosophy of shooting on a small footprint would have excelled the production and made a far better film because they would have had more flexibility. But I'll argue a smaller footprint might not always be better. After watching both movies, what Oppenheimer wins over the creator is its relatability with characters. We feel their journey. While the movie bounces around confusing timelines, its setting is in several significant locations that contain the story in something we can follow. Versus the creator, where they filmed in over 70 locations, it has so many settings and set pieces, it's hard to follow where we are and what is happening. 
The spectacle of diversity is interesting, but detracts us from diving deeper with the characters because we're fixated on the backgrounds constantly changing. Scale and spectacle diluting story and character. And ironically, I had a similar feedback with Oppenheimer. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is one of the best online resources to find a therapist tailored to you. I found that there was a lot of inner workings to how I operated in day-to-day -day scenarios that I was just hiding or trying to run away from. And working with the therapist whom I found through BetterHelp has allowed me to understand the roadmap and blueprint to why I operate the way I operate. Sometimes we're wondering what we do, why we're doing it, when we're doing it. And going through therapy is the best resource to understand who you are. Basically, after you've signed up with BetterHelp's offerings, they link you with a therapist within a few days. And it's tailored to the preferences that you've put in. If that therapist doesn't work well with you, you can just opt out and go for a different one until you found the one that works with you. There's no strings attached. You have live one-on-one -on -one sessions that you can do through video chat, phone call, or even text message if perhaps those other options don't feel comfortable for you. I highly recommend this process. And if you want to take a look at BetterHelp and have some of the growth that perhaps maybe I've had in this last year, you can go on to BetterHelp's website, which you can find a link to in the description below, you get 10% off your first month. Right out of the gate, I think Oppenheimer was incredible. And after watching it multiple times, it makes its way into being one of my favorite Nolan films. But shooting an entire drama on IMAX felt like overkill. Like when we saw it in IMAX, like many, I sat in the wrong seat, making the film almost uncomfortable to watch. The best part of it wasn't even the visuals, it was the sound design. When I saw it the second time, I watched it in a smaller theater and absolutely loved the experience. And while I lost some of the spectacle of IMAX, I gained the most important part of the film itself, which was storytelling. And there's something to be said about scale versus scope and story versus technicality. And in some ways, it feels like the filming formats should have been shift. The sci-fi epic being shot on an IMAX and the courtroom drama shot on a smaller camera, like the FX3. But I think this is what makes these two different philosophies of filmmaking so fascinating and why this will change the trajectory of storytelling moving forward. Fans, filmmakers, and enthusiasts focus on cameras, always. Even our cell phones have pivoted to being higher resolution cameras than anything else. So it's not surprising that Nolan's new film markets the spectacle of IMAX over the insane sound design or production design. It's also not surprising that everyone's talking about the FX3 for the creator. Very little focuses on the film's innovation with rinky-dink technology, like using a projector as a production design tool, like a scanning device and all these crazy things. But what interests me most about this paradox is that we've now seen two major films be made with two different philosophies about resolution and camera, and they both work. Nolan loves this idea of shooting films on the biggest format to preserve the cinematic quality, sort of coming from a cinephile's perspective and really trying to get the biggest, most visceral experience with the largest format for an audience to watch in. Versus Edwards is more about being able to capture as much as they can to compile the story and experience in post-production, sort of the way a documentarian would. And I think these two philosophies are exciting as independent filmmakers to be inspired by. 30 years ago, it was hard to see a film that wasn't shot on a camera that you could only access with either renting or spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on. Their footprint was humongous and the barrier for entry to be a filmmaker was much larger. But with digital technology and smaller rigs, the camera to which I'm shooting this YouTube video on is what a feature film was shot on. And I want to kind of share my sort of hybrid philosophy about both of these. While I've shot on big cinema cameras and I love the quality to which they have, I almost lean into the Gareth Edwards approach as well. I love the fact that I can have a tiny camera and capture scenes that are Hollywood quality that can make it onto Netflix or an IMAX screen with the camera that I shoot my YouTube videos on. And I've explored this sort of camera pairing as a filmmaker. Our latest feature film, Sway, shot on both the Alexa 35 and the Sony FX3, and our colorist did an incredible job of blending those two cameras together almost seamlessly. Now, I know which cameras are which, and maybe uh, Pixel Peeper might know, but the vast majority of audiences won't be able to tell the difference. And I think this is what it all boils down to. I think what we've realized from these major films that have come out is that it is more about how you use a camera, and marketing is really what's going to tell us which one is better, but no one is really better because we've seen 
the smallest camera and the biggest camera both make it on the same screens globally, blending both Nolan's philosophy and Edward's philosophy to sort of make a sort of hybrid approach to making movies. While we want to have the highest resolution to preserve a film's longevity and to create the biggest and best experience for an audience, at the end of the day, it is about capturing the story and getting what you can on screen. And if you're shooting on a small budget or even an $80 million budget like Edwards did, you are going to be constrained by time, flexibility, and resources. And sometimes the best camera is the one that can capture it, and that might be the Sony FX3, a $4,000 camera. But I think this is inspiring as independent filmmakers because you don't have to take one approach or the other. You can blend them together and both can make it on the big screen. Film that was shot on IMAX made it to an IMAX screen, but so did a film shot on the Sony FX3, the camera I'm using to shoot this YouTube video. Far too many of us waste time trying to get the biggest and best gear when the story is slipping through our fingertips. And I can share with you on many productions that I've done, I've been able to capture the story that I needed to capture in the timeline and budget that I had because I had the camera I knew how to use and it was with me at the time. But that's just my philosophy, blending both of those together, shooting both hybrid and professionally. If you guys like the process of hybrid shooting, sort of blending that Nolan and Gareth Edwards style together into practicing high quality cinematic storytelling on a nimble, flexible budget, I'd recommend taking a look at my course, The Four Week Filmmaker, where I'm gonna be diving into how to make a film from start to finish with a small footprint. Being able to capture high budget, high quality sci-fis, dramas, horror films, or whatever film you have in your back pocket, going from your head to script to screen in the span of four weeks. If you've ever wanted to make a film or just up-level the quality of what you're shooting, take a look at that. Sign up, pre-enroll. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, and hopefully learning. I absolutely love you. And let me know, what do you think? Should more movies be made like The Creator, or are we enjoying the IMAX spectacle of something like Oppenheimer? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love you guys, and I'll see you in another video.